We've now finished discussing consumer psychology. In the introduction I mentioned that we're going to be interested in analyzing what happens when the price of a commodity which the consumer wants to buy, like the price of apples, goes up. And we said there are two different aspects of it. One is how he feels about apples, and the other is about the old and new price of apples, the price of other commodities, and income. Well, so far in the economics part of this course, we haven't mentioned anything about prices or income. We've just been talking about psychology. But now we turn away from psychology and start talking instead about prices and income. If the two commodities are x and y, I'll denote by px the price of x and by py the price of y. Price is measured in dollars per unit, so for example, dollars per apple, dollars per orange. It's not measured in dollars, it's dollars per unit of the good. The consumer's expenditure is the amount of money that he spends on commodities. Well, the amount of money he spends on buying x is the price of x times the amount of x that he buys. We write that as px times x. Now, a mathematician might object to the notation because we're using x both to denote the name of the commodity and also the quantity of that commodity which we buy. But I don't think it's going to cause any confusion, so we'll continue to do that. The amount of money he spends on y is PY times Y. That is the price of Y per unit times the number of units of Y that he buys. Total expenditure, if he's only buying X and Y, would then be the sum of those two. So total expenditure is PX times X plus PY times Y. His income will denote by the capital letter I. And then we'll impose what's called a budget constraint. which is that expenditure has to be less than or equal to income. In other words, px times x plus py times y has to be less than or equal to i. A couple of points to discuss. When is it going to be strictly less than i? It's going to be strictly less than i when the consumer is satiated, when there's a bliss point, when, and he's got, he has to have a bliss point, plus he has to have so much money that he can afford the bliss point, and more than afford the bliss point. Because if you got more money than you need to buy the bliss point, there's nothing else to spend the money on. And so his expenditures would be less than income, strictly less than income. So usually, PXX, plus PYY is going to be exactly equal to income. This is an X here. Usually PXX plus, plus I'm running a bit sloppily here. Usually PXX plus PYY is equal to income in, uh, in our cases. Now, one may ask, what about savings? M maybe you don't spend all your money on X and Y. Maybe you save some money for the future. Economists can certainly take that kind of thing into account, and later on in the course, very uh, long, a long time from now, we'll be talking about dynamic economics, we'll be talking about the present and the future. But for right now, we assume that X and Y are the only two things you can ever spend money on. Now, one way to visualize this is that X and Y is, is you know, the amount of apples and the amount of oranges that you buy today, and the world is going to end today. There is no tomorrow. Another is that X is consumption today and Y is consumption tomorrow, or X is consumption this decade and Y is consumption next decade. So there are various ways of, of thinking about this, but the point is that you're, that X and Y are the only two things that you're ever going to be able to spend money on. Now when I'm teaching graduate students, we clearly don't do this. Instead of just having two commodities, X and Y, we have an arbitrary number of commodities, you know, X1, X2, X3, dot, 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 to Xn, and N could be as, as large as you wish. But then we can't draw two-dimensional graphs, then we have to do everything with mathematics, and that's why we don't, gonna, we don't want to go that route here. 
So now well, let's sketch the budget constraint. I'll start with the equality form, which is here. Since we have y on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal axis, it's natural to want to put this equation in standard form, which means solving for y. So we can certainly do that. Let's start with the equation. Subtract PXX from both sides. Okay, so that's what you get when you subtract PXX from both sides. Divide both sides by PY. And you get the equation for the budget constraint in the standard form Y equals MX plus B, where M is the slope. And so you can see that this term is going to be the slope of the budget constraint. B is the y-intercept, and that's this term here. We have a negative slope and a positive y-intercept. And clearly, this is the, the equation of a straight line. So we have a straight line with a negative slope y-intercept is i over py, and if you want to think about uh, why that's the case, suppose suppose your income was ten dollars and the price of y was five dollars each. If you spent all your money on y, how much could you buy? You could buy two of them. How do you figure that out? 10 divided by 5 is 2. So that's 10 divided by 5, and it was i divided by py, which is just what I wrote here. Similarly, the x-intercept is, it turns out, i divided by px for the same reason. If you spend all your money on x, then i divided by px is the amount of x that you can spend. And spending all your money on x means y is 0. So y is 0, that, that puts you on the x-axis. We can calculate the slope here. We know that it's supposed to be minus px over py. Let's confirm that. If we take this as one point and this as the other point, then the rise over run, the rise is going to be negative. It, started at, it starts out at i divided by py and ends up at 0. So that's going to be the rise. The run starts out at 0 and ends up at i divided by px. So let's simplify this. It's minus i over py divided by i over px. Uh, if we multiply by 1 over i divided by 1 over i, that'll get rid of the i's. Multiply by py over py and by px over px. Let's see what that gives. So this i cancels with this i, this i cancels with this i, this py cancels with this py, this px cancels with this px, and we're left with minus px over py, and that's exactly what we what we said we wanted. Up 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 here we said that we wanted the slope to be minus px over py, and that's what we have. The affordable set is the set of all points x and y that this consumer can afford to buy. And that's indicated by this set. In other words, it's it's on the budget constraint and below the budget constraint, closer to the origin than the budget constraint. That's a consumer's affordable set. And everything outside the affordable set is irrelevant to the consumer because he can't be there. So this is an indication of all the x and y points that the consumer can choose from. And his choice problem is what we're going to talk about next.